Disclaimer. I am not a professional book writer, and I'm nowhere near grammatically correct on everything in the book. I am not a robot. Through the reading, I will probably make various mistakes, and I will formally apologize for these mistakes and inconsistencies. This book is not appropriate for the faint of heart and may contain things like blood, torture, sensitive topics, and more as the book progresses. My ownership rights. Currently, all characters in this story belong rightfully to me, and the plots and ideas are completely original and belong to me. You are not allowed to copy, trace, steal, repost any of the work featured in this story, use any of the species featured, write fan fictions, and ship characters. And I would prefer you not use my stories and characters and species as inspiration. You are allowed to have debates about the book as long as you don't claim things as yours, ask questions, talk about the story, make conspiracy theories. I don't mind people talking about the story story and stuff. As long as I'm given full credit for my creations, I'm completely fine with what you do. Thank you. Crystallized. Chapter 1. The Disaster. The trembling sound of shaking rang through the echoey cave. Chimes and chinking are heard throughout the cave. Crystals were forced against the walls you saw. So many crystals. The cave was beautiful. The faint glowing and cool atmosphere that the cave gave off. Something was disturbing it. The start of it all was gentle. The shaking faint. It was only enough to rise concern. Not enough to start a panic yet. That was the scary part. She gritted her teeth, wobbling, caught off guard by the shaking. She was a considerably large black and silver and pink insect. What was she exactly? At first glance, without proper knowledge, she looked like an odd combination of a butterfly fox and maybe even dragon. Without the size, of course. She stared at the almost black, rocky ground, flickering the bioluminescent patterns that were scattered across her lean body. The cave continued to rattle softly, shaking and trembling under her feet. She was more than mildly concerned, especially with her flock just down the winding tunnels. She had originally woken to an odd, sickening smell. Concerned, she got up to check it out. She couldn't find anything yet. Her stomach felt eerily hollow and queasy. She gave a breath, taking in another whiff of the gross smell. Another rupture of shaking pursued on, and she proceeded to lose her footing, falling over to be met with a crack in the ground near the top of her snout. Her eyes widened a bit, and she quickly got up. Her tail was kind of inched between her legs, and her eyes followed the tip of the crack as it began to grow. She shook her head a bit. She needed to find the source of, well, the awful smell. She ran forward, light-footed. You barely heard the touch of her paws to the ground as she ran. The smell got worse. She was starting to feel sick. It only came to her now, but the once bright cyan and pink crystals on the walls and scattered across the floor were now a bright green, hinted with red. This area of the cave felt evil, for lack of better words. It made her stomach churn, even more than it already was, and the ground felt brittle, as though it would break under her paws at any moment. It wouldn't. She was way too light for it to break under her. But the texture indicated to her that if she were any heavier, it would break. She was way too light for that, though. This meant that the ground was hollow. She wouldn't be surprised, though. There were many tunnels and passageway in these caves. There could be an entire cavern right under her feet, and she wouldn't know. The female gave a breath, walking onwards, still trying to find the source of the smell. Slowly but surely, it got worse and worse. It started getting to the point that, if she were being honest, she was beginning to see things, feeling sick. She shook her head. She felt another, more powerful shake under her feet. She turned around immediately, realizing she didn't have time to find the source of the sickening smell. She had a flock she'd left alone in an open cavern, and the caves were shaking. She had every panic response in her body reacting right now. Everything was telling her to find her flock. Suddenly, you could hear the light pat of her paws on the ground. She was running as fast as she could while trying not to fall over and throw up. Feeling terribly sick. 
Her eyes watered as she ran, skidding to a stopping point as she reached the cavernous area. Her eyes were wide as she gave a sharp breath. It was heartbreaking to come back to the cavern where she left the flock, just to find everyone in the area panicking. She watched for a moment, observing the few who were crying, the few who were sleeping through it, and a few who were panicking. Clearing her throat, she put a paw down and raised her wings. Listen up, she chirped loudly to grab the attention of the small numbers of butterflies in the cave. When eyes turned to her, she raised her wings and flashed a sequence of glows. Gather the children, wake up the people sleeping. We're gonna evacuate the cave, she calls. Not waiting for the response of her flock, she ran into the numbers. And then she scooped up a small cup couple of small children before staggering as a violent shake erupted in the cave a shattering sound was heard when crystals began to crash down from the ceiling no one was hurt but things were beginning to become messy she glanced around and ran over ran over to a particularly small nine-year-old she then shook the child roughly hey wake up she ushered she didn't want to scare the child but she needed to get the kid up quickly but unfortunately, she scared the child. Watching the child wake up, standing quickly, and then staggering backwards and passing out from the sudden jolt of panic. She coughed nastily. A flow of blood was dripping from her jaw. She hauled the nine-year-old onto her back, her legs shaking. It wasn't a lot of extra weight. Butterflies didn't weigh almost anything, but she wasn't feeling great. She looked around, flashing the glows of her wings. Do we have everyone? She called. She got a clear response from everyone, being yes. All the children were gathered, and everyone was awake. Tired, but awake. She then staggered forward and began to ran, run through the tunnels that would lead to the exit. Follow me, then. Please, she chirped. Leading the way through the tunnels wasn't easy. It was taking longer than it should have. She was slower, and this wasn't a good thing. Being slow could easily mean that the, could easily mean the demise of her flock which is why she tried to push onward. Her navigation skills were not as great as she wished, but she pushed onward. Stopping abruptly as they reached another cavernous area where another flock lay, she gave a weak breath, examining the diurnal flock, quickly realizing they were not out of here yet because their leader was down. She grunted quietly, her legs shook. Hey, you guys, she chirped looking at the members of the diurnal flock. Grab your young, get your leader, you're sleeping, and follow me out of here. She instructed, surprised to find how quickly the members of the other flock moved to listen to her. She looked back, making sure she had everyone. She ran to the next tunnel, leading the flocks through the twisty tunnel. They began to near the exit. She couldn't help but pick up on mumbles and questions that she couldn't answer. Her ears twitched. What's going on? One butterfly asks. Why is this happening? What's the cause of all this? What are we going to do about the injured? Who's going to lead us? A butterfly from the diurnal flock. Questions continued on, most of them repeating. She couldn't answer any of them, though. She wanted to answer the questions and ease the aching fear of the butterflies around her. But she couldn't. She herself didn't know what was happening. Even though similar events like this have been happening for the past 20 years of her life and even beyond that according to the last flock leader no one yet knows why this is happening and why all the caves that the butterflies have tried to settle in are suddenly getting destroyed before their eyes for no reason things didn't add up and there was no way to tell why this was happening she continued to run before stumbling across a familiar steep passageway that sloped upward it was rather narrow and anything larger than a butterfly around her size wouldn't be able to fit. It was the reason why butterflies were so small. If they were not small, getting through the caves would be impossible. So she squeezed herself into the passageway and crawled up the steep tunnel. One by one, other butterflies followed her up the tunnel, smaller bu butterflies helping each other out. The ordeal was a test of teamwork, as butterflies needed to work together to be able to get out of this in one piece. She pants lightly and quickly they were led into another, now wider tunnel. It was as if they were climbing a mountain. It was extremely steep and the tunnel sloped up and down. 
Her eyes continued to water. Blood continued to drip from her jaw. Her eyes laid upon the exit. Her ears perked suddenly. Her eyes brightened. Just a bit. The exit. Yes. Suddenly, with a small burst of adrenaline, she rushed out to the exit, putting a paw over her eyes suddenly as she skidded to a stop. The bright light blinded her for a moment. She stood on the edge of the cliff face. She raised her large, beautiful wings, signaling a stop. She stared out across the plain of the forest below them. Pacing at the edge of the cliff face, she was looking for a safe place down the mountain. She passed glances back and forth. There was no way down. They had to fly. There was no other way. A nervous feeling fell upon her chest, and she gave a hazy breath. We might have to fly, she breathes, turning to face the flocks. She stared at the flock of butterflies, just admiring how exhausted the butterflies looked. She felt terrible for it all. The worst part was she didn't know how long they'd be running like this, how long it would take before they found somewhere safe to settle, how long before there was no more caves left to settle in. Chapter 1, Part 2 An Unanswered Question Fly? She thought. She was a young butterfly. Her fur was pretty blue and a purple mixture. She had a dark she had dark patterns of crescents and stars speckled across her body and a mane of faded sky blue, purple, pink, and white fur. Her wings were rather small, and they had almost a feathered appearance. The feathers of her wings had little markings near the tips and generally across the wing. She had two sets of wings. One set was larger, one set was smaller. Her wings closely resembled that of a butterfly's wings, but quite possibly even prettier. She only appeared to be around six in size, but really she was nine. She had wide heterochromic eyes. One resembled a sunset and the other resembled an aurora borealis in a way. She didn't know what just happened. She was very confused and tired. She'd just been minding her own business, humming songs, when their leader was attacked by something strange. The thing that attacked her leader resembled crystals in the cave, but moving. Whatever it was, it was huge. It was so weird, it looked like the cave was alive, but it wasn't. Her little kid brain didn't know how to comprehend the sight. Whatever it was hurt Mr. Leader Man. She does not like things that hurt Mr. Leader. It's wrong. Even after Mr. Leader was hurt, the cave seemed to come to life. The cave was so angry, it was shaking them around and trying to throw crystals at her and the other butterflies. Why did the caves try to do that? She wonders these things in bewilder bewilderment. She then huffs a bit, shaking her head as she turned to her brother. Brother, she whines. I can't fly yet. How will I get down with everyone? She asks her brother, crossing her arms. Her fur puffed up as she complained about lacking the ability, f ability to fly like the rest. Most butterflies are, are able to fly within weeks after they get their wings, but for some odd reason, her wings initially were too small to fly with. Granted, her wings have been growing larger at an alarming rate, but she couldn't fly with them. Her brother looked vanquished, maybe even tired. He seemed rather out of it, as if what just happened happened in a completely different way in his eyes than it did hers. She didn't quite understand this, how serious the stuff that was going on was. She thought all that had been happening was kind of normal. It already happened a few times before. She never really questioned it being she was frankly too young to understand. I don't know, Luminescent, he replied, his large iridescent wings twitching. I could probably carry you, or someone else could. However we do it, we will find a way. Luminescent wasn't satisfied with this answer, partially because she wanted to be able to fly down herself, even knowing she probably couldn't. Luminescent gave a small puff. Fine, but you aren't flying me. She squeaks, crossing her arms. You are terrible at flying, she huffs, accusing her brother of his bad flying. She'd flown on his back a few times, and he was so unsteady. She could barely get, get a grip. She huffs again and then giggled lightly as she hugged her brother's leg. Love you, brother, she chirps happily. She skips off into the other direction and runs into her sister, hugging her leg as well. Eeny, eeny. She squeaks. Can you fly me down? She asks her sister. 
tilting her head and just staring up at her. Her sister, in her little, little kin opinion, was great at flying. However, Luminescent was also very biased with her opinion. She loved her sister a lot. It took Luminescent a moment, but after observing her sister, she noticed her exhausted look. She tilted her head a little and looked out to the sun. It was the middle of the day. Why was everyone so very sleepy today? I mean, she was sleepy a little earlier, but not anymore. She was only sleepy when she was bored. Why was her big sister sleepy? She huffed after not getting a response and then tugged her sister's fur. Eeny, she puffs. Answer me. She pipes as she continues to tug her fur. Her sister seemed to give a faint breath and she observed. Luminescent blinked a few times, still waiting for her sister's response. Yes, yes, I'll fly you. Luminescent gave a happy hop when her sister said yes, jumping up and down. She just looks very happy with this response. Satisfied, she sat down next to her sister, looking all puffy little kid proud of herself before giving a long breath. Finally, Luminescent took a moment to register everything that happened, and finally something registered. After seeing many injured, her eyes widened a bit. Her little kid brain kind of seemed to register what happened, and then she frowned. Blinking a few times, she went from down to up again before she got up and she tugged on her sister's fur once more. Sorry, she chirped quietly to her sister. She didn't exactly know what was happening yet. She was still a little too young to understand what was going on. But even as a little kid, she could tell something was off about this all. Luminescent huffed a little. The young butterfly then turned and walked back, slipping through the small group of butterflies, staring into the cave from the large entrance. She stared for a long time. A small glint within the cave caught her attention. She continued to stare. She shouldn't go in. But she wanted to go in. She wanted to know what that was. She was not thinking. I mean, why would she? She was nine and curious. She paused and then looked back to the flocks. No one had noticed her, yet. She looked back, staring at the glint within the cave. She wondered if she went in and was super quick about it. Maybe she'd be able to go in and get out quickly. Luminescent turned her head to continue to stare and then frowned a bit. She did not want to worry her sister. She worried her sister before and, well, she didn't really want to do it again. The feeling of dread she got when worrying her big sister, she didn't like that feeling. She didn't want to worry her sister like that by just disappearing. She looked back into the cave, conflicted on going in. She felt drawn to it, in a way. She felt kind of weird her mind flipped and went back and forth she turned her head and looked to her sister she shook her head nah -uh, not today she was not going to worry her sister again by just disappearing she ran back to her sister and puffed up a bit big sis she complained a bit uh she started just now realizing she didn't know how to word this question why would her sister let her go into the caves alone, especially with her navigation skills? She was so bad at finding her way that her sister had forbid her a while ago from going anywhere without others knowing or assistance from someone who did know where they were going. Mm, she grumbled. There's something in the caves, she puffs. It's weird and shiny. Can I go check it out? Uh, maybe you could come with me? She chirps, looking at her sister, wondering if she had worded that question right. Luminescent watched her sister look down at her. She was wide-eyed and sparkly, hoping for a yes, of course. Her tail was swaying in minor excitement. No, Luminescent, we can't go back there. Were you even paying attention to what was happening there? The cave is, it's, it's like falling apart, her sister scolded a bit. Lume, dear, it's dangerous, her sister said in a fretful tone, before scooping up Lumi into one arm and then lifting her onto her back. However, Eni caught sight of something. Something about her sister. She said nothing, but
but her eyes met with the end of her sister's tail. She never noticed it before, and was suddenly caught in a thought of bewilderment. What was that? Luminescent looked bummed out. Her ears seemed to go down in disappointment. Her tail flipped. She gripped her sister's fur, burying her small face into the back of her sister's neck with a huff. She kind of pouted. No, she did not like the response she got. She guessed her sister was right, though. But she was still mad. She crossed her arms after a while, and then just lay there on her sister's back. What was that? What was that? What was that? I am very sorry for the amount of times I messed up while reading this, but I do hope you enjoyed chapter one and chapter one part two. Um, this, this is all I have to really say. I'm really sorry if I messed up that many times, because I probably did. You see, the thing is, is I tried to record it right before this attempt that I'm probably going to be putting up soon, but my headphones were connected, and my microphone on my headphones wasn't close to me, and uh, <laughs> my actually good, almost no-mess-up run of reading the story wasn't recorded in audible audio, so yeah. Also, I'm, I'm not like an audiobook, so uh, I make so many mistakes when reading. But I hope you enjoyed. I, I don't often read aloud to people, and I'm not very good at it, so yeah. Bye!